Okay, this is uh, the second part of uh, the episode one, and the reason why I've broke this up into two parts is because, I'll explain a little bit, with music it's very important to try and be as creative as possible, but there are different sides to making music. You've got the creative side, which is actually throwing ideas, inspiration, um, you know, writing your keyboard parts, finding your sounds, um, what kind of sound you want to create, the kind of music you want to make. That's the creative side. But there's also the other side, which is the organizational side, which is basically what we did in, in part one. Um, the organizational side is, you know, uh, making sure everything's tidied up and uh, color coded, named, etc. All of that real boring filing side of things. And it's very important, and it's a really basic lesson that I was taught very early on not to confuse the two. If you're going to be creative, try and be only creative at one point. If you're going to be organized, uh, organizational filing, try and do that, just that, you know. Don't confuse the two. Now, part one was the filing, organizational, making the template, etc. Now what we're going to move on to is the creative side. And that's why I wanted to split it up into two parts. So, first I'll explain uh, where the inspiration for this particular piece of music is going to come from. We've got a graphic um, artist type animator who's... Uh, um, amazingly talented. He started a little video for us, for me. Um, his idea was to animate these characters, uh, then be on a world, you know, they're doing their own thing, and this would be the world. Now, this is actually looking through a microscope at subatomic particles, okay? This here is snow, for instance, on a subatomic level, looking at it so deep that it's there. All right, here's a little uh, snippet of the, of the animated character, character one, living on this subatomic world. So the idea for the track is, is that, you know, you, there you are, you're looking down at another world, as somebody could be doing with us right now, you know? And it's like subatomic life. So there's the inspiration for the track that I kind of came up with. I've done some lyrics, I've done some sort of uh, vocals based upon that, which we'll, uh, we'll get to on the next section, or one of the sections anyway. So again, it's very important at this stage, if we can just, you know, we work solely on the ideas and the inspiration. So the inspiration for this particular track comes from the video that Mark's going to be creating. Um, also, you know, we think about things like tempo. I've got the tempo currently set at one two six. The reason being is because generally people play house music between one two five and one thirty, so it's a good in between tempo. You're not slowing it down. You're speeding it up. You create, you know, if uh, uh, you're creating a bit more energy with the tempo and when you're DJing. Um, so that, that, that's my tempo decision. We've also got, I've also got like a, an iTunes folder set up called D. Ramirez Inspiration. And uh, in there, I've just put a load of tracks that I'm playing at the moment, things that are inspiring me, sounds, things. Um, there's also tracks where I can actually take some loops and steal some sounds out of, etc. Um, and there's some of my own tracks in there, which I know work because I created them and I know that they work on a dance floor, so I'm gonna kind of use those as inspiration as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create a ghost track, right? So I'm going to drag over, this is a new track of mine, which is uh, going to be released soon. We'll drag that onto an empty track. You can see it's copying the file. Right. Now, I know that this track is at 126, which is my tempo, so, which is great. Okay, so what we've got there is actually what you call a ghost track. And a ghost track is actually really, really important. And the reason being is, is when you're first starting out, you know, sometimes you need a reference. Uh, even when you're like a fully experienced producer that's been doing it for years, still you need a reference. Particularly if you're a DJ and you're kind of, you know the track will work out. It really rocks the dance floor. It's great if you can get that track and you can put it in your arrangement um, and we can reference things like kick drums, we can reference the way that the bass sits in the track, we can reference the, the way it's arranged. You know, we know that this arrangement works really well so we can copy that arrangement if we want. We can go ahead and you know, take that intro and do it the same way. I'm not saying we're going to copy the track, we can use it as inspiration basically. So that, that ghost track sits there right in the thing. We'll, we'll mute that for now. And, uh, when we're looking at it on waveform level like this, you know, you can see that you've got that little piece there, and then that's, there's a bit of a break there at this section. I'll zoom in on that. There's a break down at this section. Um, 
you can see that then the track kind of comes in full at this section here, it goes along, and then we there's another big break, that's the main break of the track, etc. Then it comes in there, you've got the, and then that's that, and then that's the outro. You can kind of work it out just by looking at the waveform, you know, in terms of arrangement. So particularly if it's a, if it's a track that you know works, it's great to get in there. So we're going to go right ahead and mute, mute that for now. So that's our ghost track, which is uh, very, very important. Next up, we're going to get a whole bunch of sounds. Um, we're going to use some go-to synths that you might like. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to get up some things that we know really rock, some sounds that you know you like, some synths you know you like. So we'll start with, I'll create a new instrument, software instrument. You saw my keyboard command there, which was Option, Apple, N, okay? So we'll create a new instrument. Now, I'm gonna go right ahead and go straight to the ESP. ESP is a, I'll zoom in on this little fellow here. Oops, come out of that, I keep forgetting to do that. The ESP is a Logic plugin, which actually looks quite simple, but it's actually quite a nice synth due to its simplicity. So we're gonna go with that. Oh, let's minus that. Okay. I'm just going to load that up for now and shut it down. I'll call it the ESP so I know what it is. Okay. Next up, we're going to get... Uh, we're going to go for... Maybe I'm going to look in the Native Instruments folder down here. We're going to open up... Now, I like to go straight for Reactor 5, okay? Because there's a little... There's a synth in here which is comes bundled with it. We'll go to ensembles. Again, I'll zoom in on this for you. We've got this sequence synthesizers, and we'll go straight to carbon two. Open that up. Uncheck that. Press OK. We've got carbon two open. Okay. Now for drums. I'm going to go right ahead and open a couple of things. F Expansion Guru. Now, F Expansion Guru is a soft drum machine plugin and it's multi timbral, i.e., it has eight engines, eight drum machines that operate on separate MIDI channels. Okay, so engine one is on MIDI channel one, engine two, MIDI channel two, and that's within one plugin. So it's what you call a multi timbral plugin, which we can check this multi timbral option here. Okay. Um, we'll set that to eight because it has eight, eight engines. In fact, we're not going to use all eight engines, we know this, so we, may, we might use four. So we'll create four Guru. You can see the instrument four there will actually, will actually open up Guru. Audio instrument, F expansion, Guru. When it's ready, there we go. Okay, so we got Guru, there he is. We'll shut that down for now. Element three, we'll just name that, just so we know what it is. Reactor, okay. Uh, we'll not name Guru because it won't name all of them. So um, then I'm gonna go right ahead and open up another plugin, which I really like, which is also multi timbal It's eight part multi um, which is it's called Stylus RMX by Spectrosonics. Great plugin, I'll show you why as we go along. So we've got eight parts, it's multi-timbral, it's a software instrument, we hit create, and there we go. So if I call instrument five, I'll call this stylus RMX, okay? This one I'll call Guru, Guru, okay? So we know that that's Guru, that's stylus RMX, okay? So basically we've got some you know, stock sounds together. I'm thinking that maybe I'm gonna use the ESP for bass because it's, it's got a nice little character, it's quite simple, you know. Reactor, maybe something special, a chordy kind of sound. Oh, there's one more thing I'm gonna get, which I'll actually insert into here. I'm gonna open up, uh, we're gonna open up um, Native Instruments, Native Instruments FM8, which is a beautiful soft synth, it's quite an interesting graphic interface, which is nice. We'll show that. So we'll name that FM8. Okay, let's close this down here. 
So you can see that we've actually got, um, you know, we've got a few synths open and ready to go. So let's create a little cycle point here. And let's start by making a little basic groove. For that, we're only going to need some audio channels. So I'll go ahead again. We'll, we'll, we'll create five stereo audio channels. What these are for are actually for, we're going to make some, you know, bring some basic drums in. Now, I've got to stress the emphasis of this part is actually, we're just throwing ideas in here, you know, we're just going to stick some basic beats together, we're going to stick some, you know, just some basic bass lines, something, just a few basic bits, and then we'll go back to them and work, at them, work on them in detail later on. Okay, so what we can do now, you can see we've got audio 2 selected. Let's zoom in on this part. Let's grab the finder window. Uh, now we've got the Muteki library, which is really nice. They're, I think, responsible for all the Vengeance sample CDs. Uh, we've got Club Essentials 3, which is really good. One of the guys here at Icon Collective put me onto this, and uh, there's some quite nice things. So let's get a simple bass drum here. Let's have a look. Clubhouse Kicks. Let's have a quick look. Quite nice. Oh, that sounds pretty good. So let's drag that in. Now we can drag right into the arrangement here. You see? So let's go back to Logic. And we can create a basic. We can copy the kick drums over like this. Okay, now if you don't want to copy the full four bars of kick drums, what you can do is you can select those. You can go over to region and you can go folder, pack folder, right? And then it makes a little folder there, which we can then hit the L button and create a little loop. So there you go. <laughs> you know what? I probably need a few more of those, don't I? There we go. That's more like it. Now, if I, the what, important thing to note about folders is if you go into a folder, right, you can think, like, think, how the hell do I get out of this folder, okay? Because, like, you can't get out of it. So you just simply double-click within the arrangement in Logic, and that takes you back to the arrangement itself. Okay, so I'm zoomed in. So I've got a basic kick drum there, which is quite nice. Let's shorten that down to, like, one bar. Again, let's, let's make our cycle a bit shorter. Okay, we're not going to name anything yet. We're just going to quickly throw some things in. Let's go back over to the uh, finder window. Let's go to, uh, let's have a look what we've got over here. We've got collapse. Let's have a look at snares, okay? Let's have a look at some of these snares. Okay, there's one here, I think that's quite nice. Let's have that. Okay, again, drag it in. Go back to logic. 